This is a moment for, this is a Donald Trump win. It is also a Kamala Harris loss. Well, I think that it's bigger than Kamala Harris. Just like, frankly, I think it's bigger than Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. um, Kamala Harris jumped into this thing with about 100 days to run a race, wasn't the presumptive initial nominee for this cycle at all, and ran a flawless campaign, frankly. Well, and there were just clearly wasn't some flaws, it, oh, it didn't no, work. No, that it, it wasn't any flaws and that there were any gaps in the campaign. It just wasn't enough. I can imagine what can be and be unburdened by what has been, you know? Who doesn't love a yellow school bus, right? Can you raise your hand if you love a yellow school bus, right? Just, there's something about the, and, and most of us, many of us, went to school on the yellow school bus, right? When we invest in clean energy and electric vehicles and reduce population, more of our children can breathe clean air and drink clean water. I grew up understanding the children of the community are the children of the community. In one term, he has already, yes, you may clap. <laughs> I, I do believe that we should have rightly believed, but we certainly believe that certain issues are just settled. Certain issues are just settled. Clearly we're not. No, that's right. And that's why I do believe that we are living, sadly, in um, real unsettled times. So, Major, what battleground state looks good for Kamala Harris tonight? <laughs> I know, you think, keep thinking through them. No, th there is no really good answer for that right now. So you asked, are there any places that the vice president is overperforming Joe Biden in 2020? So we could show you that as well. We just bring that out here. Harris overperforming 2020. Holy smokes. There you go. Uh, so let this go away and see if there's anything on the east side there. Uh, Literally nothing? Literally nothing. Literally not one county? Whereas with the left, it, there seems to be this weird obsession with exclusivity, <laughs> purity, and purging people who are, you know, heterodox or whatever. Mm. But this idea that we should cut ourselves off from anyone who thinks a little differently from us, that is a losing strategy. What has happened that the big tent coalition is fracturing in this way? I think that's really the question, and that's something that, you know, isn't necessarily simply on Kamala Harris's shoulders. She certainly should address it, but I think the party writ large, we gotta figure this out, because this is, these, this is data, right? These are just the facts, the numbers, it's win, mm -hmm. and this is serious. Um, and so I think that what she should come out and say, and I, I have to say I wish that she would've come out and said it tonight, frankly, mm -hmm. is that she has been giving it all she had and that we're gonna fight until the end and that we're never gonna give up. And I think that was a missed opportunity for this evening for all those people who were gathered there at Howard University who stood out there for six and seven hours who were waiting for her um, to, to come and address them. I think that tomorrow she's gotta, you know, she's gotta come out and say, look, we left it all on the field and we're proud of ourselves for the campaign that we ran because honestly, I keep digging and trying to find the thing that I can say that, oh, if Kamala Harris would have just done this, it all would have been different and I can't find it because it was isn't simply that the campaign misstepped. Mm -hmm. It's that there's a whole issue with how we're connecting with Americans right now. So if someone is willing to be kind to you, even if they have a different political opinion, and if they're willing to have a conversation with you, well, there is an opportunity for persuasion there. And I wish the mm. left overall realized that, right? It, These people are not our enemies. I'm talking about voters here. I'm not talking about you know people in positions of power. When it comes to ordinary Americans, these people should not be viewed as our enemies because they think differently than us. They should be viewed as our fellow Americans participating in something that we're supposed to value, which is our democratic process. But I will say this. I don't know if it's a strategy or if it's just who right wingers happen to be, but their willingness to welcome people is honestly how you build power. It really is. And the left just fails to realize that. I don't know why they want to treat politics as if it's like this cutesy little exclusive club, but that's certainly how they treat it. But then there's also this uh, paradox because you look at the current Democratic Party, like Kamala Harris's campaign, for instance, and she's like luring in the who's who of Bush era Republicans. And 
I don't like those folks. I, I don't like neocons. I think that, in fact, I became politicized when uh, the neocons were in charge during the Bush uh, administration. And the idea that I now have to just hold my nose and support Kamala Harris, even as she is talking about the value of having Dick Cheney endorse her and campaign with her, it just like grosses me out. It's interesting to hear you say that because, you know, one of the things that, that people have said about Donald Trump and, and Kamala Harris has said it too, like he's a billionaire, he's not like us. Well, you know, when you see the celebrity endorsements, you know, the average American is not hanging out with Taylor Swift and Oprah. And it's it, it's almost like, well, who, who's the elite person here? I mean, he's the billionaire, but these are not our friends. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, just real quickly, I, I do think she, she made some fundamental mistakes, especially not being able to differentiate herself from uh, a very unpopular president who she just replaced instantly. Um, she when, when she said nothing comes to mind. You have done something uh, differently than President Biden during the past four years? Uh, there is not a thing that comes to mind in terms of, and I've been a part of, of, of most of the decisions that have had impact. Um, mm -hmm. That was, I think, a killer for a lot of voters who said, "What? Who are you? What are you? What are you running on?" Um, I think they were open to giving her, her a shot, and she did have a brief honeymoon period there where she looked like Joy, and she was, uh, you know, the summer of brat. That didn't last because she ultimately didn't have any substance to go on. They didn't give her a big idea to run on. It was just. Mm -hmm. I don't like Donald Trump, and I'm not going to be Donald Trump. Okay, a lot of people don't like Donald Trump, but ultimately, it's about the voters, and it's about their personal, how are you going to make my life better? And I don't think she made the sale on that. You know, what, one of the things I just wanted to add that's interesting um, to me about American politics <coughs> is that we can pretend that there was some persuadable, movable middle this summer when Kamala Harris jumped into the race, but that's actually a completely false narrative. Everybody knew who they were with and what team they were on and how they were going to vote mm -hmm. months and months and months ago, back when Biden was in the race. And so in this last couple of days, as you look at the conversations that are happening, the media is out talking to people, polling people, what is the actual persuadable gap? Maybe there were like three or four percent of the population that were like, ah, you can still maybe convince me to go either way. Mm -hmm. But I think that that's also something that the Democrats need to be really honest about is that people have made up their minds and they know where their hearts are connected to. And it isn't necessarily them when they think it's them, right? It's not necessarily us. And we've got to figure that out because I don't agree that when Kamala jumped in, she had an opportunity to all of a sudden convince 20% of America to come and be with her. People were already in camps. Yeah, but, I, but, it, but, it, but if a black South Asian woman can't convince American women to vote for her, there's a, like, that's a big... She got the majority of women. If you look at the... I mean, she's sure, but but but... but then she would have won if she'd gotten them all, right? Which was what she was appealing to mm -hmm. by the end of it. I mean, you guys talked about the gender gap at the beginning. And that, to me, speaks to the, the idea that we've been talking about, that she didn't offer a way to fix things for people right now who feel like the, the system is broken for them. And the line that stood out to me in that Donald Trump speech was, we had a common core of common sense. Mm -hmm. And that stood out for me because it's what our conservatives say, too. Correct. We that have phrase, a common yeah. sense... Uh, response to what is happening. And I, I, I don't, like, maybe they just didn't give her the right things to say. I don't know, but I don't, I don't think that she had that, a common sense What is his solution. common sense solution? Could you articulate well, that hey, for hang us? Hang on a second. Maybe that's tax cuts, missing. tax cuts. <laughs> and it's to, to Paul's point about authenticity. Um, I, I think also, you know, that the media gets hung right. up on stuff that doesn't matter to right. a lot of the right. people who voted for Donald Trump tonight. Right. From cats and dogs right, to Puerto Rican, mm -hmm. islands of garbage, all that stuff that seemed like it was, that's the end of it all. There's nobody who can survive this. All these but, disqualifying statements. But the people who were, mm -hmm. nobody cares. I can, mm -hmm. Back to the yep. economy yep. and all that. That's what matters. The other stuff, yeah. it's just noise that people like to put in headlines. Mm -hmm. And we're a party to that, mm -hmm. you know. It's, all of it is really... We've seen this before, though. Mm -hmm. we, had the, we could have had these same conversations in 2016, and we didn't see it coming. Or they, you know, or what matters to MAGA isn't the stuff that is, you know, they don't have a voice as part of the problem, right? They want to blow it all up, get the, the bull in the china shop, break all the dishes and start again, because this whole world, mm -hmm. the liberal media elites, etc., doesn't respond, isn't 
doing anything for them. And this is not an American phenomenon. This no, it's not. It's not an exclusively not. American no. phenomenon by, by any nor, nor just North American. It's in Western Europe yes. as well. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. 